Andrew, second time up here, but uh, we do have some new people in the room. So if you can just give us, uh, uh, tell us quickly who you are and where you're from. Sure. And for those that weren't listening the first time, um, I'm still Andy Burrell. I'm still heading uh, marketing for one of Nokia's businesses called Cloud and Network Services. Um, it's a software-based business, OSS, security, and also core networks. And yeah, really glad to be here. Okay. Um, and uh, before, we're, we're going to look at some of the, uh, go into a little bit more detail on some of the things you talked about this morning. But just uh, in general, um, what's Nokia's approach to, to helping telcos with their AI um, requirements? What's, uh, what are the main engagements that you're having with uh, operators right now in terms of AI? Um, so this morning we spoke about Sense, Think, Act, these three layers. That was our kind of framework. A lot of the focus there was on data, data governance, data quality, and so on. Um, I don't know if there is really a simple answer to that question because the, the nature of our engagements varies. I mean, you know, the industry is not um, homogenous. The discussions we have with a tier one CSP in the US are uh, different to those that we might have, uh, you know, with somebody in Middle East Africa or, or Asia and so on. But and, and, and there seems to be a sort of changing pattern. So a couple of years ago, um, energy was very, very hot. I mean, obviously there was, you know, crisis going on and, and spikes in, in, in prices. Um, so that was like the single topic that we were talking to, to most of our customers about. Uh, before that, we had security uh, prompted by you know things that were going on in the world. Um, it seems to it seems to sort of revolve right. Customer experience at one point was the sort of lead topic. A lot of it seems to come back to cost. Like it's slightly depressing, but um, anytime you can talk to a customer about cost reduction, suddenly uh, the doors are open and and uh, the discussion gets a bit more serious. So it's really um, really varied, I would say. Okay. Um now, one of the things you talked about this morning uh, was the this um, sort of uh, the network nirvana uh, related to uh, uh, automation, and and we know that there are some operators that uh, have put themselves, you know, quite far down uh, the path. Uh, I imagine some of that is, um, you know, in particular parts of their. Uh, operations where they've reached level four of level five. But you also, also talked about a, um, uh, a figure, and I always like to, to hear money, uh, money numbers talked about with an 800, potential 800 million saving from full automation for telcos. Can we just break that number down and find out what that 800 million means? Because um, I would imagine that's probably the largest operators in the world um, going almost sort of, you know, fully autonomous with their day-to-day -day operations? Um, yeah, so, I mean, before we get into that, um, we've got a lady from STL in the room, actually. So uh, this was some research we did together with STL partners and also Charlotte Patrick uh, research. Um, we had some discussions about the modelling and, and, you know, our perspective on it, um, some interviews with CSPs and so on. Um, that $800 million um, sort of um, headline figure is based on, um, in quotes, a typical service provider. Um, what does that mean? It's one with uh, revenues of, of uh, $15 billion, around about 30-odd uh, million mobile subscribers, and I think it's like 12 million fixed subscribers. So you can argue, like, is that representative or not? But it, it's not, uh, you know, it's not necessarily the biggest. You know, it's not only China Mobile or Verizon uh, that you could get those kind of savings for. And, of course, um, I think as a percentage uh, you've got the same chance to, to make, make those savings. And then I guess the other thing I should correct, uh, the way that I worded it, to keep it simple, was 800 million savings. It's about 650 million, I think, in savings and 140 or whatever it is in incremental um, revenues as well. Right, a value. Of, uh, and over what kind of time period here, here as well? Because that's... Uh, so that's, I mean, the savings are on a per annum basis. Um, and this is on the assumption that you move to level four, level five autonomy as uh, TM Forum define it in their uh, maturity model. Okay. Are these the kind of um, sort of numbers that, that generate uh, interaction that get uh, the service providers of the world uh, interested to find out more? Um, yeah, to a certain extent. I mean, it's a big enough number, I think, to uh, to attract some interest. People want to know where does that number come from, just the discussion that we're having here. And yeah, what's realistic for, for me uh, and my organisation? And of course, you can break that down into different domains where you think you can get quick wins, 
um, you know, fault management as an example or, or, or field engineering or something like that. Uh, but yeah, it's a big enough number to, to attract attention for sure. Okay. Um, and then uh, again, earlier on, you were talking about um, uh, use cases, um, but you also talked about some specific customer engagements uh, where some of your uh, Nokia's uh, technologies, technologies have been used in specific examples. Can you drill down into um, some of those a little bit more? Telefonica Germany and um, uh, Claro, I think, were the two that you were able to name that were on your slide earlier. Uh, yeah, okay. So those are both um, public. I mean, there's been press releases and video testimonials and so on about those. And the first one, Telefonica Germany, it was Malik Rao, the CTO there. Um, who, uh, who was sort of vocal about this. He's a bit of an advocate for, for SaaS. So this is um, our AVA energy efficiency solution deployed in a, a SaaS model, um, classic kind of approach uh, that we have with pretty much all service providers. It starts with a discussion around, you know, what's the use case? What's the value uh, for this? Uh, I, I mentioned about, you know, a couple of years ago how hot energy was as a topic and how everybody was feeling the pain. Um, classic sort of approach where we have to go and prove the technology works. Um, you know, will it actually make the savings that you're predicting? Um, the headline figure there was like a 10% reduction in, in energy consumption. Uh, and then going into kind of scaling that across the, the whole of the, the network. And um, it's a really obvious thing, but like this, you know, when you're talking to, to the CTO organization, there's always concerns about quality and potential impacts and, you know, a natural reluctance, I suppose, to, to take hands off uh, and to let the system make changes to the network. But uh, yeah, that's a journey that we've been on and, and yeah, we're starting to see the results already. Okay. And with Claro, that was the focus there was on security, which we haven't heard talked about uh, a lot today, but it's one of the areas where uh, machine learning in particular has been deployed for, for many years already. Yeah, um, I mean, it's really obvious in a way that security is uh, important and, and has a lot of scope uh, for getting benefits from, from AI. For some reason, we kind of treat it specially and, and, and have you know separate forums where we discuss it. Um, with Claro Columbia, again, that's a public case. I think the press release was out um, sometime earlier this year. Uh, it's applied to their 5G network, um, about 35 million subscribers on that network. And I think there's actually three sort of separate security solutions that we've deployed there. The first one is um, endpoint detection and response. So that's a... Um, uh, an agent that's deployed on the network functions to detect, as an example, uh, malware or intrusion. Uh, then there's a privileged, privileged access management system. Um, so that's monitoring uh, what Claro's own employees are doing, because inside of threats, whether that's um, you know malicious, somebody um, you know trying to, to to blackmail you or whatever. Uh, that's a big source of problems, uh, you know, across all organisations. And then the last point, um, we have something called uh, CyberDome, which is our extended detection and response uh, platform, and that sits above the endpoint detection and the privileged um, access management uh, solution. Okay. Um, and finally, before we move on to the next session, um, can I ask what is next from Nokia in terms of its uh, AI product development? Wow. Um, I think, you know, there's been a lot of hype about generative AI. Um, there's been a few sort of atomic use cases where we've seen it applied to, um, you know, things like customer care and, and, and so on. A lot of use of, um, you know, co-pilot type functionality. I think we're still fairly early in that journey. Um, I think one thing that I think is quite exciting is we spoke about uh, data products. So the idea that you take the raw data, um, you curate the data, um, you make it usable in a form for, for a data scientist. I think there's a lot of scope for generative AI to um, empower data citizens to do some of the stuff that data scientists are doing today. And that's an obvious kind of efficiency gain, but also um, just increasing the possibilities for, uh, for telcos. And, you know, we've always had the data, um, getting access to it, making it available, uh, that's been the challenge, and I think we're maybe on the point of um, making a step change in that, I would say. Okay, excellent. Well, Andy, thanks very much for helping us to open up this afternoon's uh, proceedings. 
Um, we're going to uh, move on now to the first session of the afternoon, but give a round of applause yeah. to Andrew. Thank you very much.